Streaming English, and I would love to know, Valentin, how you have learned English. Well, uh, I decided, so good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Valentin speaking. I decided I learned English. I think it was very easy for me uh, to learn English in any other language because I had a lot of motivation. So, I had a friend living in the United States and he told me when I come back, I want to speak English with you. So I just started learning English, never stopped, and it was very easy. I was able to speak the language in three months. In three months. Wow, that's amazing. In three months. You, it was three months. Yes, I got no doubts, no doubts, but I just learned how to speak the basic of things, and then I kept on going, going, going. Because I say all the time, a language never finishes. You keep on learning all life long. I mean, I agree. So there's many things in English that I'm sure that I don't know. Um, so that's amazing that you're able to learn in three months and have that motivation of a, a friend that was going to come and visit you and speak in English. That's awesome. Um, are there any particular things that you did, any tools or anything that you use to learn? Well, I just say, if you want to learn something, just learn it. And if you want to speak a language, speak it. And we have to start with the simple things, like with a hello, with a hi. And then what I used to do is a combination of questions, like asking, for example, I chose a day asking, where are you going? And I stay there all day long. Where are you going? And then I did a combination with the pronouns. Where am I going? Where are you going? Where is she going? Where is she going? Where is she going? Where are we going? Where are you going? Where are we going? And I do this in present, in present, uh, simple present, present progressive, past, simple past, past progressive. And then I do it in all tenses. So it was very easy. I chose every day, like places, uh, food vocabulary, and those kind of things, then it was easy. And then what I did is I talk to myself all the time, like when I wake up in the morning. But I'm telling you, if you're watching this video and you watch it, if you're going to learn any language and you're going to talk to yourself, I recommend you highly to tell the people around you that you're learning a new language. Because if you start learning a language speaking in a very strange way, they see these guys is going banana or getting crazy. So I told him not to learn any language. Yeah. Uh, that's funny because I was doing the same thing, just taking a walk and learning Spanish, not Spanish, but um, Italian the other day. And I was like, all right, there's some people there. Maybe I should not be repeating the stuff because they might think I'm strange. But and I do that around my kids, too. And my daughter's like, what? <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah. that's that's awesome. And I, I like that method of like really talking to yourself um, or, you know, repeating and just making sure that you're speaking the language. That's awesome. Yes. And I learned to master a language is not knowing a huge vocabulary. You don't have to know a lot of words or grammar rules to master a language is, I say, if, for example, if you say hell out. That when you listen to hello in different ways, you know what the meaning is. And that is what we call to master a, a, a phrases, to master, to express yourself and to say what you want to say. And then, you know, also like a lot of people, they, they want to be fluent in English. And there's a reading a lot of books, uh, everything. And to be fluent is to flow like the water. When you want to say something, you flow, you don't even have to understand 100%. You just have to understand the basic things and response and answer. And that is to flow in through the time you're gonna be learning through the years, you're gonna be learning, 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 learning all the time. That's what I that's what I, I think. So if you tell me, for example, learn Japanese or Russian in three months, I'm gonna be able to do it. The only thing I'm gonna do is to take the most important phrases while you start speaking, you start speaking, you fall in love with the language. And then if you fall in love with the language, you love the language, you're going to keep on learning. Yes, you understand? So that's what I want to say. 
So what about you? Why? So for, for me, I started learning Spanish when I was in high school first, and I took it for two years. And I learned a bit. I learned the rules. We really learned from books. In fact, I have like, I learned again in college and took up, and this is one of my college books. And it was mostly book learning. And then I studied a bit in college and then I kind of stopped. I didn't use it at all. Even though there's people all around me in the United States, I, I work with people from Ecuador and Panama and I have friends from Puerto Rico and Colombia, Dominican Republic, all these countries. And I hear the language, but I don't speak it. But I started again about five, six years ago. And I first started using Duolingo and just kind of really trying to familiar, familiarizing myself with the language again. And then I listened to lots of podcasts, podcasts like Ling Language Transfer, Pimsler. I've been listening to that for a long time. And then I watched lots of videos on YouTube and with the subtitles and really started to be able to develop an ear for the language. And I started taking some classes. I took a seven week class with Spanish land, an intensive class, um, Spanish land from Colombia. And then I started taking some classes with Aurora from italki. She lives in Venezuela. And that's been really helpful. Um, and actually you were an inspiration for me because after we've been talking, I started to take classes again with Aurora um, and spoke the other day for an hour in Spanish. And uh, it was good because I felt like I was getting a little rusty in my speaking. I can understand it a lot and um, read it and understand the videos, but I hadn't been speaking. So you were a good inspiration for me to get started in speaking again. So I decided to take that lesson again and get back on taking the lessons and forcing myself to at least spend at least an hour just talking to someone in Spanish. And it was amazing because when I did speak with her, we could talk about everything. We could talk about my kids going, my son going to college. We could talk about my daughter and I could, I could speak and I could really, you know, think of all the verbs and all the past tense and all that and not be as nervous as I sometimes am if I'm speaking with someone else. Um, so I think I need to do that more so I can just start speaking with more and more Spanish people, people. And I think you were also an inspiration for me to start really um, starting to learn another language. So I started to learn Italian a little bit and just start listening to language more and get more familiar because I would love to be a polyglot like you are. I think you said you learned, you know, like five languages. So that's been my experience is, you know, really just book learning in high school and college, but now kind of trying to immerse myself in the language by watching and listening and now getting back to speaking to people. Yeah, you know, what, what I do is, for example, I take textbooks because you have to have like a, like, you know, a patron, a patron, you have to have one to follow the rules, everything. So I fix, I take the book. Okay, I say, okay. Then I study the grammar rules, of course, but then I concentrate myself in speaking. Like, for example, if today we're going to talk about the simple present, then what I do is I look for on YouTube, simple present, it's uh, phrases. And then I start learning. Like, for example, like this one, let me see if I found it. I do concentrate in a day. It doesn't matter uh, the language. It doesn't matter the language, the target language I'm learning on the day and then for example i i just play on my screen or something and then i start asking where are you going for example where that's the way i learn i, I can't speak seven languages now then i say where are you going and then i say i'm going to the airport i'm going to the airport where are you going? I'm going to the amusement park. I'm going to the amusement park and I see this and I get into this, you know? And then I try, I'm going to the apartment. I'm going to the apartment. Oh, where is she going? Where are they going? Where are they going? That's the way I practice every day. I'm going to the bank. Voy al banco. Para donde vas? Voy al banco. Voy a la estación de autobús. You know, if I do this every day, just 
phrases. One day, uh, where are you going? What are you going? I just spend a whole day using the 10 things that is going to be very, very easy to learn in language. So that's what I that's what I do all the time. I just concentrate in a day uh, learning this just one. And then I, so I, then I go to the second step. So I recommend, uh, I recommend everybody, like if they want, they just need to concentrate in one thing. Like we say, inch by inch, step by step, just one. Repeat and repeat all the time. And what I do is I watch, also cartoons, comics, and I repeat. Mm -hmm. I think that is one of the best way, but not only watch, also repeat and act at the same time, like when you were at school. When you were at school, you got the play, and then you have the screen, you have to act. Like you have to mimic then, you have to imitate then, and that's gonna be fun. And yeah, I sounds, think like, a, the sounds way. like a good way to do it. That's a, some Yeah, because good you're gonna have fun, I think, to speak a language, the only thing is you have to speak it. And like I say, if you learn like five phrases every day, para donde vas, voy al banco. Para donde vas, voy al cine. Para donde vas, voy a la playa. Para donde vas, voy al teatro. When you learn this, just in a day, different, different pronouns, just in a day you use it. And doing this kind of combination, imagine what you're gonna know in three months, a lot. But you have uh -huh. to keep on going every day. So that said, do you have any other questions? I mean, I don't have any. I'll tell you like a lot of people I speak to, they will say, Rochelle, how can I how can I get rid of my accent? And I'll tell them basically from everything I've read in my experience living in the United States and working with a lot of immigrants is that unless you have moved to an English speaking country before the age of 10, you're most likely going to have an accent. For example, I will tell you, I have friends from, from Colombia that came here in, when they're in college. They've been here for 30 years and they have gone all the way to their master's degree and they still have an accent, but I can understand them. I have um, my children's father who's from Russia. He came at 18 and he still has an accent. His mother who came in her 50s has a very strong accent. But I work with students at the, co the school I work at, and some of them came here before they're age 10. And I, if they came here before age 10, they can speak English with no accent. If they came here during their high school years, um, they usually will have an accent. And most likely, that's not going away. Not to say it's impossible, but at the same time, I don't think it's totally necessary. Like, I just started a friendship with somebody in Italy. And I love the way that Italians will speak. And because every word in, 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 in Italian ends in a vowel, when they speak English, they will speak it and have all their words ending in a vowel. And I love that. I, and I think I don't want that to go away. I love the way it sounds. So uh, basically, I say, don't worry about it as long as I can understand you, as long as you're speaking properly and I can understand you, that's fine. Yeah, but I think is, I think is, uh, it's not only the accent. I think, you know, I've, been, I've spoken with many people and I think they have to add emotions when they speak. Oh, true. You know, because, you know, you have the stress where you have to match, like, I think, my opinion, tempo and pace. You know, tempo and pace. It doesn't mm -hmm. have an accent when I speak English 100%, but I try to match tempo and pace. And that's what I tell the students all the time. It's not the same to say, I love you. I love you so much. You know, when you say, I love you so much, you know, you put like a little emotion. So I think you're gonna be uh, better on the stool when you're speaking. But some people, they they don't have emotions. Yeah. And that is difficult to understand because I say all the time, when you learn a language, it's not only the language. You have to learn also how people think and the way they speak. Because imagine if I go to, to the United States and then I speak like uh, uh, in the same sounds all the time, that might be, I think, a little bit uncomfortable. And if I'm trying to learn a language like English to make some business, or I don't know, to, you know, I need to connect with the people. 
and you connect with emotions. So, and I, I yeah, that I've is seen it with um, important things. With um, students, like say I have a student and she speaks perfect English and her mother comes in and she's telling me something and the mother has spoken nothing. She's, the student says, my mother doesn't speak English. Then all of a sudden I hear this English coming out of the mother because she all of a sudden, she has that emotion you're talking about. And all of a sudden, whatever's going on with the daughter, whatever she's telling me, the mother's like, I have done everything I could to help my daughter and, you know, basically that emotion has caused her to be able to all of a sudden speak this English that the daughter told me she couldn't speak. I was like, well, you've understood us the whole time. And what we were talking about with your daughter all of a sudden made it happen. Emotions. I tell right? you for emotion, it doesn't matter because, you know, it's like when you wake up, you say, wow, what a beautiful day. What a wonderful day. Wow, she's beautiful. Look at her. That's different. Like you say, oh, what a beautiful day. You know, you have to get emotions. So you're going to yeah. be very communicative. It doesn't matter if you have an accent, if you don't have an accent, but I think it's emotions. That is yeah. one of the most important thing because I think it's nicer when you speak. Yeah. So anything else? That That's that's it for today. I, I enjoyed um, speaking to you and learning more about how you've learned English and I'm um, talking to you about these different ideas. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes, yeah. Thank you very much. So people, uh, do not forget if you like this kind of video, do not forget push the like button, subscribe and share with your friends. We try. And don't forget to hit the bell so you know when we post more videos. Yeah, of course. Okay. So thank you very much. And like, we'll be back. Like Arnold Schwarzer. Absolutely. We'll be back. Okay. Bye. Bye.